Hi guys and welcome back to our FIFA 21 Sunderland Road to Glory career mode. So in the last episode we did play three games. We went to Peterborough and we lost by two goals to one. We actually played really, really well in that game though. I must say a massive improvement from the first game of the season where we did win against Rochdale but we played really, really poorly. We simulated, we did a quick sim in the next game against Cheltenham in the first round of the Carabao Cup. We lost 1-0. Then we did the other simulation against uh, Fleetwood. We watched it and we did win by one goal to nil. Now, before we do get into this episode, something that someone did mention to me in the last episode is uh, accidentally set the aftermatch uh, in the schedule to be a training day. That was never meant to be the case. It was supposed to be a recovery day. <laughs> I never meant to do that at all. So uh, I'll keep that as that. So thank you for uh, letting me know. I was wondering why our players were absolutely exhausted. But in this episode, we do go to Burton away from home. Then we take on Bristol Rovers, followed by a game away from home again against Northampton. Now, a couple of things I do want to talk about. Uh, so first and foremost, I did get a suggestion from one of you guys, which I think is actually a really good suggestion, to change or develop... Uh, the new lad, uh, Isaac French, the youngster who's going to come through, who, who does have potential to be special, which is absolutely mad. So I'm going to develop him to be a striker or a centre-forward, potentially one of the two, because I think it might take longer, uh, one longer than the other, to become that. He's, of course, right now we can play on the left-hand side of midfield, plays a right winger and as a cam, so he does cover quite a lot, but I like him, or it would be nice to have him as a striker. So as a centre-forward, it'll only take 14 weeks for him to become a centre forward, but as a striker, oh my god, wow, it'll take 143 weeks. Now, don't get me wrong, his form is poor, which means it'll take it a lot longer. It'll take a lot longer, should I say. So, if we do play him a few times, he'll uh, uh and he gets his form up and he plays decent, is uh, it'll obviously take a lot quicker. But I will do it to centre forward because it'll be nice to have him just behind a striker as well, and he can just set it to a centre forward anyway, can't you? So, We'll, uh, we'll set his development plan to become a centre-forward. I have also made it so Luke O'Neill is going to be a right-back as well because his main position was right-wing-back. So I've set his training, which should only take a couple of weeks, to become a right-back. Now, another thing that has been on my mind is, uh, is January. Of course, we're still quite some way off January. But with the new youngsters coming in through the academy, it's kind of through a spanner in the works to, uh, to my plans, because of course we have the likes of Dunn, we have Dan Neal, Hackett, we also have uh, Embleton as well, and Diamond, there's quite a few youngsters in there who, you know, ideally I would have liked to sort of train up, but now that we've got uh, these youngsters in, we've got Bryce, who's rated 62, he's only 17 years of age, he's got, he's an exciting prospect, we've got Winkler as well, who's a centre medical can play as a cam as well, uh, likewise with Bryce, and of course, uh, the main man himself, the right midfielder, we have Isaac French, who's only 16, he's already rated 69, so there's a few players that have already become a little bit redundant, for, like, for, for example, Dan Neal, you know, realistically, I think he'll only probably go up to, I don't know, early 60s, um, in his prime, if we are being realistic anyway, of course, I would have liked to have trained him. But now we've got a couple of players who are miles ahead of him already. Uh, same with Embleton. I think Embleton might, we might be able to get him in the sort of early 70s, mid 70s, um, towards the last stages of his career. But I think the likes of Winkler and, and Bryce are going to be even higher than that, which is a shame. But we've got the players now anyway. So what do you think we should do? Just let me know in the comments down below. Shall we maybe loan out some of these youngsters? Um, like Diamond and Hackett and, and Neil and stuff like that. Should we loan them out for six months in January? Or should we just simply get rid? Because we have the players there that are going to be better than them. But anyway, it's just a thought anyway, so just let me know. There's also been a little bit of a bug. So you may have noticed that over the last uh, episode or two that Luke 9 has been the captain. There's been a bit of a bug where, regardless of who I set it to, it keeps randomly changing it to Luke 9 And I don't know why I've been changing it constantly. And it keeps changing it back to Luke 9 And then what happens there is... Whoever had the captaincy beforehand, they'll come to me, i.e. Grant Ledbetter, who was the captain. Um, when the captaincy gets handed over to Luke O'Neill, Grant Ledbetter comes to me saying his heart's broken and all this kind of stuff and his morale goes right down to the bottom because it's uh, obviously a really offensive thing to do to just do that out of nowhere. But then even when you just simulate a game with a reserve side, because your captain isn't even playing, they believe that the captains have been taken off them. Do you know what I mean? So even when O9 isn't playing or Ledbetter or Power aren't playing in the reserves, whoever was the captaincy in the last game comes to me saying they're heartbroken. I don't know why you've taken the captaincy off me. And it must be a bit of a bug because I can't play my captain in every single game, which uh, is going to get really, really frustrating because, like I said, both Luke O9 and Ledbetter have both come to me and their morale has gone right down to the bottom because we've took the captaincy off them. Um, 
But uh, anyway, hopefully that fixes itself. I have set it to power because it is in real life, so hopefully it does change it now and it sticks with that. But anyway, into the game now. First game of this episode, we're up against 20th place, Burton away from home, which is quite poor for them because I do expect them to be up there come the end of the season. Now, I am going to change one player. One player because I do want to get their sharpness up, which I know we can do through training, but I find it to be a lot quicker when you actually play them. I'm going to give French a start on the right-hand side of midfield instead of Gooch. Because I think this will be enough. We have Burge, Hume, Wright, Willis, O'Neill, O'Brien, Power, Scowen, French, Graham and Grigg. I believe that's enough. Let's go get ourselves three points. Fingers crossed. Let's get into it. Here we are, away from home at Burton. It's absolutely pouring it down. But hopefully the conditions don't hamper our chances to get a win in this game. I'm really excited to play with the likes of French. He's seen me very decent when we have used him. And I think he'll look even better with that centre-forward option to his name once he does develop there. Scowing now, breaking forward. He does find French. Can he cut inside? Yes, he can. Help him out. Give it him back. Over the top. That's it. Chase it down. Big touch. Big touch. There we go. Get the ball in the box if you can. It's been blocked. It's a corner. Well played, son. That'll do. Whips the ball in. Get your head in it, Graham. Get your head in it. It's been headed straight back to power. Get it back in first time. He does. Headed away. Edwards now on the edge of the box. It's a good chance for them. No foul. Please don't give away another penalty. I'm not having three penalties in three games. Jesus Christ. I can't see French. Making the run. Please find him. Get there first, French. Get there first. Oh, so close. We do get the block on, though. Get him under the pressure. Get him under pressure. Get him. Get him. Ah. Oh. oh, my God, no. Good chance for them. And it's, it's in. It's 1-0. This is a nightmare. An absolute nightmare start. A few decent passing moves. And he's in so much space on that side there. It's a great strike. Come on, lads. We need to do better than this. Go on, get Grigg in. Here is Will Grigg now. Please, someone help him in the box. Someone help him in the box. There's no one there. Hold it up. Hold it. Well played. Get it in. Go on, get your head in. It's someone headed away. Scowen. Power from distance. Go on, have a crack. He has digged one out and it's gone wide. Come on. Oh, no. It's another chance for them. Please, no foul. No foul. No foul. That's yours. Get your head in. Get your head in. Well played. It's a corner. Just before half time. This is not what I wanted at all. Corner into the box. That's yours, Burge. Keep hold of it. He's punched it. Still in the danger zone, though. Back in the box. Get your head in it. Away, away, away. And it's gone wide, thank God. Half time. And it has been end to end. But we just have not been anywhere near as clinical as I would like. Gonna have to change things up if things don't change in the second half. Second half underway. Come on, let's get our first little comeback. I'm positive, I'm positive. Scour now. Find his man. It's a lovely football. It is Danny Graham through on goal. Go on, son. Finish it off. Surely, Graham. There we go. Easy as you like. It's an immediate equaliser in this second half. Come on. It's lovely football. That is more like it. Dragging him out. There we are, Graham. Take your time, son. He had acres of space. And then just passed it into that bottom left-hand corner. Come on. Oh no, it's a good chance for them. Quinn, he's got acres of space there, but that's a great inception by Willis. Take it forward yourself, son. Take it forward yourself. Try and find Grigg. He is in. It's Grigg. Go on, this could be the counter-attack of dreams. The first counter-attack of dreams. Go on, strike it. Yes, get in. It's 2-1 and it's Will Grigg. Get in, son. That is exactly what he's here for. Get in. The first counter-attack of dreams of the series. For those of you who don't know, I used to use that term so much in the last series. And it's a cracking finish as well with his left foot into the bottom corner. Let's not mess this up. We are going to get that comeback. I told you, we are going to get that comeback. Right, here's Powers. Nicks it off him in the middle. Can we get a third here? It is Max Power. Get it in the box, son. Get it in the box. Go on, son. It's Greg. It's in. It's 3-1. It's an absolutely beautiful finish. From Will Grigg. Oh my word. Get in. Powers nicked it off him in the middle. He's gone all the way down this left hand side. Pinged the ball in the box. What a strike this is from Grigg. Who absolutely smashes it into the roof of the net with a volley. From close range mind you. But it's still a difficult technique that one. 3-1. What a difference the second half has been. Now I'm going to bring on a few subs. Uh, well I'll say a few but all three. I am going to bring on Gooch, Embleton and Maguire are all going to come on. O'Brien. Graham and Scowan are going to come off. Vernon down the left-hand side now for Burton. Trying to get one back. Embleton holding him up. Oh, no. Get into him. Oh, please. No penalty. No penalty. 
Pile now on the edge of the box for Burton. Get over to him. Getting a bit desperate. Don't dive in though. Please don't dive in. They have such a, a habit of diving in with sliding challenges. Get into him. Get into him. Well played. And again. And again. Well played. That's the more like it. That's more like it. What was that pass though? A pile on the pressure though now. Burton. Which kind of suits us because it, we are a counter-attacking team pretty much. Let's break forward now with that counter-attack we've just been talking about. Go on, make your move, make your move, French, make your move. Over the top, there you go, lovely stuff, it is French, go on, son. He's not the quickest, but it is French. Still French, and he's, oh, maybe, I thought a penalty may be given. Oh, he has five-star skills, so I thought I'd try it, but he's only rated 69, so he does it at a snail's pace. It didn't quite come off, did it? Nick it off him, nick it off him, well in Chris, and again, and again, well played, pressuring him like this, this is lovely stuff now, and it is Chris Maguire, still Chris Maguire, go on, sweat it, get there first, finish, get in, it's 4-1, and it's a Will Grigg hat-trick, Will Grigg is officially on fire, and Burton's defence are terrified, get in, they're just absolutely collapsing at the back now, it's great pressure from Chris Maguire, who's just come on the pitch of course, and it's just rifled home by Grigg to get his third of the game, well in son. Playing a really dangerous game at the back, to be fair, Burton. Well played, French. Come on, let's get a fifth. We want five. We want five. It is Grigg now holding it up. Go on, make your move. Make your move, someone. There we go. It is Maguire. Coming down the right-hand side this time, but players are so slow to get into the box. Dude, dink it in, though, towards French. French doesn't score. What a chance. What an effort that was from the young lad. On his left foot. Oh, it was so close as well. I thought that was going to be five. We've really turned it on in the second half. It was such an even first half. I thought it was quite unfair that we were down by a goal to nil. But in the second, as soon as we got the first couple, because even then it was quite even, Burton have just absolutely collapsed. I don't know whether, whether that's because they're committing more men forward or what. But they're giving away the ball a lot more. Panicking a lot more. Now here is Grigg tries to flick it towards the King. Chris Maguire, can he give it him back? He does try and hold it up for Grigg. Go on, son. Can he get another one? Oh, my word. Oh, my word. As I was just saying, Burton have well and truly collapsed. And Grigg is, is not even on fire. He's a volcano, this man. He's erupting with flames. He's erupting with lava. It's 5-1. I'm losing my mind here. I'm absolutely losing my mind. And there goes the full-time whistle. I had a feeling we might be able to get a comeback at half-time. But by this amount, I, I did not predict this whatsoever. 5-1 away from home. He scored four goals with four attempts, Will Grigg. The man is on fire. Flames. So after that game, we have actually just received a notification uh, regarding Wright's, Bailey Wright's development schedule. Now, I think it does actually let you know when they basically hit the prime. And they're not going to improve anymore. But anyway, let's have a look. It says, Hi, Mr. Sarney. I'm writing to let you know that Bailey Wright has been developing well. And we're now satisfied he's reached the physical and technical levels we expected from him. We'll continue to monitor his performance levels going forward. I believe he may have the capacity to further improve on his numbers and push past the limits we previously imposed on him. Oh, okay. I see. Right. So it's not telling me that he's hit his peak. It's telling me that he's hit his sort of expected peak. Um... But there is chances he could progress even more. Okay, so he's gone up by one, is what they're telling me, I'm pretty sure. Okay, that, that's decent. I like that. Okay, and now just before this game at home, as we do welcome Bristol Rovers, we also have another notification. There we go. Development complete for Luke 09 uh, to swap his preferred position between a right wing back and a right back. Press Y to change it. And that should be it. That's brilliant. That's really, really good. I'm happy with that. Now we can actually focus on his growth a bit more. And we actually get a rare achievement for converting a player's position, which is really nice as well. I am actually going to remain his growth on... Uh, I know it balanced ups everything at least a little bit, but I think an attacking wide back would be good because I do want him to get forward. His crossing ability is pretty poor. Uh, or is there anything else, really, that can do it for me? No, I do like the attacking wide back um, growth. 11 weeks it says it'll take, maybe, for him to uh, get to 70 rated. That's not too bad either. But here we go again after that game. That last game, Power was the captain. I'm almost certain. And now he's saying that I'm taking the armband off him and making Leppitt the captain. He is the captain in the second team sheet, which is the reserve team, but he's not even in the squad there. So I don't understand what to do here. Uh, don't jump to conclusions. Will that improve his morale a little bit? It has a little bit, but even so... Look, they're all doing it. Ledbetter, O'Neill and Power, they're all complaining about the captaincy. It's getting ridiculous. If you have any suggestions, let me know in the comments. But 
This is mad. But now we are going to simulate this game against Bristol Rovers. I have changed up the lineup drastically because I just want to give some players some game time because morale is so massive in this game and they're very, very sensitive and very touchy, these players. But I am going to do a quick sim of this game uh, against Bristol Rovers. So hopefully everything goes to plan. Uh, Grig is starting. In fact, I could change Grig. I'll take Grig off and I'll put Wyke on or someone like that just to give him a bit more game time. Uh, yeah, I'll give, Wyke, I'll give Wyke a go up top. Um, so yeah, we'll go with that. And it will do a quick sim. So please, please get us another win, lads. Please. Yes, we win. 2-1. And it's a, sorry, an 80th minute goal from Jack Diamond who gets it. It looks like uh, Bruce Rovers actually played really well in that game. But we do come away with a 2-1 win. Happy with that. Buzzing. So the final game of the episode is against 5th place Northampton. They're actually doing really well. I've had a really good start at Northampton with 9 points from their opening 5 games. But we are going to do a simulation of this one. Not the quick sim. But we are going to simulate the match. Uh, who shall I start? We do have Gooch, but I do want to keep playing um, Isaac French. Well, I'll stick Isaac French in there. Uh, we need to get his uh, sharpness up because before, to be fair, at the beginning of the episode, it was like two or something. His sharpness is now up to 27, so it is improving. Uh, we will bring on Gooch at a later stage in the game, I would think, uh, to give them some game time. But let's simulate the match. If needs be, I will jump in. Um, we haven't even tried the jumping in feature yet uh it'll be interesting to see how quick you can actually jump in i might do it even just for the last last sort of like 10 minutes of the game because uh, it'd be good if you can just quickly jump in and it doesn't do with like a big load screen and stuff because that just make things uh a lot easier and simpler but away we go it's been a good start this season for northampton hopefully we can uh rock the boat a bit and get ourselves another three points in this episode go on oh nine go on son get it in get it in the box pass it man Pass the ball. Get it in. Someone shoot. Someone. Oh, and it's a save. Good stuff this now. Power on the edge of the box. It's Grig. Finish it. Get in. It's 1-0. It's Will Grig again. This man cannot stop scoring. This is who Sunderland should have bought. This is the version of Will Grigg in real life that Sunderland should have bought. Half time is rapidly approaching now. We've dominated this one so far, to be fair. It is Max Power. Back to Luke O'Neill. Just get the ball in, man. Get the ball in the box. And it's been flipped on. It has been headed. It's a save. By the keeper, half time whistle goes, and we've dominated as you can see 71% possession. Possession wise, in these games, we seem to be in so well. We'll look, resume the game, but like I say, when there's about 10 or 5 10 minutes left, I'll jump in. Uh, of course, if things are looking difficult, I'll jump in earlier. But if we're still in the lead, I'll still try it anyway, just to see how quickly you can jump in. <gasps> oh no, I've accidentally just pressed X to jump in. I did not mean to do that, and it does do it rapidly. Oh, God, no, I accidentally pressed X to jump in. But anyway, we're going to have to play the remainder of this second half now. But I can confirm it literally takes seconds to do it. Now, here is O'Brien coming down this left-hand side. Go on, cut in, lad, cut in. There we go, that's so good. Well played, O'Brien, help him out. Help him, pass it, finish. Straight away, we've made it 2-0. Maybe we should have jumped in in the first place. Get in, and it's Will Grigg again. What is that, six goals in two games for him, something like that? That is absolute insanity. Lovely play there by O'Brien, taking this man, brings it to the byline. I was quite cautious about passing it because I've noticed a lot of the time when you pass it at that angle, it just gives it straight to the opposition, but that time it didn't, and it was a lovely finish from Will Grigg. Oh, it's a good passing though, this from Northampton, getting to him, oh, he's turned on man brilliantly, and it's 2-1. Oh, God. Why can't we just keep a clean sheet? It was a lovely play there, to be fair, though. From a Northampton striker. Held off his man really well, then twisted and turned. See what I mean? That, that was really nice, I have to say. There's nothing I could have really done there. I was trying to hold on to him, and he just wriggled around. Oh, no, it is Adams now on the right-hand side. He tries to pull it back. He has done brilliantly well. Great chance for them. What a block that was from Bailey Wright. Come on, get it out, man. Jesus. What a block. Oh no, they broke through us again. It's a great chance. Surely save us. Oh my God. We're so lucky here, you know. We are so lucky. Now I wish I didn't jump in because I'm scared. I feel like I've ruined it. Oh, it's a great chance for them. Watson down this right hand side. And he's hit it into the side netting. Oh God, it's one of those nervy endings again. I might have to sweat it. <laughs> keep hold of the ball. What is he doing? He's passed it to the completely wrong man. I've just said I wanted to keep hold of the ball. What the hell was that? Get it away, lads. Get it away, please. It's like they're trying to give them a goal there. What the hell? Oh, just please make one pass. They're really genuinely trying to give them the ball here. I can feel the, an equaliser coming. Because 
the passes that usually would just go straight to your player. They're going now, they now go straight to Northampton's players. Now here is Hoskins. This is so predictable. Thank God he was offside. See what I mean though? I feel like they're just trying to give Northampton the benefit of the doubt. Make your move, make your move. Go on, go on French, get there first, get there first. Well in French, referee, surely. There we go, we don't do shoulder barging in this sport. <laughs> Ping it in the box. Ping it in. That's terrible. Absolutely terrible. I should have just played it short and held onto the ball for the final few moments. That'll be a free kick. Well, there's only a minute left. There's only a minute left. He's tried to pass it backwards. He has done. Come on, get it away, lads. Just hoof it, hoof it, get it away. Blow the whistle, ref, please. Referee, come on. We're in the fifth minute now. How much time do they want? Come on, please don't concede. Do not concede. Get it away, get it away, get it away. Well played. Referee. Get in! Jesus Christ. I thought we were just going to simulate this final game of the episode. Everything would be cushy, but no. I accidentally jumped in for the second half, but we do get away with a 2-1 win. So after that game, we have nicely rounded off the month of August. And as you can see, at the end of the episode, we are now in second place. Really, really decent start to the season, winning five out of six, losing one, which was a bit unfortunate. Peterborough, as I did mention, who we did lose to, I knew they'd be up there. They are now in fourth. They seem to be unbeaten pretty much since they did beat us, but Hull are still undefeated. That should be an interesting game. But we are second with Hull first, Ipswich, Peterborough crew and MK Dons across the top six as well. We'll have a look at the bottom of the table, see how teams are doing in the bottom four. Doncaster still there. Burton still there as well, of course, after beating them by five goals to one earlier in the episode. Rochdale and Accrington sitting at the foot of the table. But that'll be it, guys. If you have enjoyed, please hit the like button. It'll be massively appreciated. And subscribe to the channel if you're not already to become a fully-fledged member of the Sony Army. But for now, you take care and stay jamming.